Good morning, this is Kyle coming at you with another video. Here we go. Believe. So, today, today is Tuesday, and I hope you had a good Easter. So, I wanted to talk about the book of Acts, and I asked the Lord, can I, is the next book that we're going to go into Acts? And I got a no. So, there's something to where you start discerning the voice of God and he speaks in your heart. It might come into your mind and understanding, but you have to discern what's of you and what's of God. And sometimes I st I'm still practicing how to discern, but I got a no, Luke 24. And I don't sometimes even remember what, um, if the, you know, if Luke even had how many chapters. Um, I've read it before. However, I believe the Lord wants to talk about Luke 24. There's something that God wants to get over to us. So, still talking about the resurrection of Jesus. In fact, the whole New Testament so much talks about the resurrection of Jesus. And because we believe in him, we have the promise that we shall also be resurrected. In fact, we're resurrected in our heart. We're given a new heart when we come to believe in Jesus, when we get to know his word. And there's a con continual transformation in him. And then one day, we'll be truly resurrected with him. So, here we talk about um, Jesus appearing to two disciples. I've said this before, but I just want to um, glance at it. So, Luke 24, verse 13. Later that Sunday, two of Jesus' disciples were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus. A journey of about 17 miles in total they walked. So Jesus appears to do two disciples. Now these weren't the two of the 12 disciples. Jesus had other disciples. In fact, Jesus had 72 disciples go out and preach the message of his coming on his way to Jerusalem. Well, now that he's resurrected, he's going from Jerusalem to Emmaus. So out of Jerusalem. Now the word is spreading out. But um, though, even though uh, Jesus has more disciples than just the 12, but the 12 disciples were considered apostles. Um, and so even for us, like there are many disciples and what even God has revealed to me is that the disciples, all disciples, were called to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord because one day Jesus is coming back. So now we're actually preparing that way. We're preparing hearts, we're preparing people um, we're letting you know about Jesus, and then one day Jesus will appear, and we're going to experience the resurrection with him, those who believe and receive the message. So anyways, they were in the midst of a discussion about all the events of the last few days when Jesus walked up and accompanied them in their journey. So Jesus accompanied them, but they were unaware that it was Jesus walking alongside them, for God prevented them from recognizing them. So God has a way also of, you know, he, he can do whatever he wants. God has a will. But God had a veil over, over Jesus so that these two disciples didn't recognize Jesus. And Jesus answer, said to them, you seem to be in a deep discussion about something. What are you talking about? So sad and gloomy. They stooped, uh, they stopped. And the one named Cleopas answered, haven't you heard? Are you the only one in Jerusalem unaware of the things that have happened over the last few days? Jesus said, asked, what things? The things about Jesus, the man from Nazareth. They replied, he was a mighty prophet of God who performed miracles and wonders. His words were powerful and he had great favor with God and the people. So Jesus operated miracles, signs, and wonders. His words were powerful. He had favor with God and with people. And as a matter of fact, that's how we should be living now in this new, in this resurrection power that we have today. But anyways, but three days ago, so it shows that this was three days after he resurrected. Jesus actually visited these two guys, walked alongside them three days after he was resurrected. Jesus is now walking. He can appear actually um, to anyone and he's still walking the earth after his, his resurrection. So, but three days ago, the high priest and the rulers of the people sentenced him to death and had him crucified. We all hoped that he was the one who would redeem and rescue Israel. They wanted to, uh, they were expecting the Messiah to come and rescue them from the Roman Empire. 
they were, they didn't know that salvation was actually the forgiveness of mankind's sins and it was salvation and it was redemption but they couldn't discern what that is it had to be discovered and discerned through jesus so Jesus said to them, why are you so thick-headed? Why do you find it so hard to believe every word the prophets have spoken? Wasn't it necessary for Christ the Messiah to experience all these sufferings and then afterward to enter into his glory? So Jesus is actually explaining. Jesus fulfilled all the prophecies, um, everything that was spoken about him. And these prophecies were spoken about hundreds, thousands years before Jesus came on the scene. And he had to experience the suffering, and now Jesus entered into his glory, the glorious resurrection. Then he carefully unveiled to them the revelation of himself throughout the scripture. So Jesus was revealing himself, but they didn't discern that Jesus was right in front of them. And that's what a lot of times people don't discern, and people don't even realize. According to the scriptures, that Jesus is there amongst those who are gathered in his name. When two or three are gathered in, in his name, Jesus is amongst you. He started from the beginning and explained the writings of Moses and all the prophets, showing how they wrote of him and revealed the truth about himself. So, um, so later, he actually joins them uh, at for dinner. So, joining them at the table for supper, he took bread and blessed it and broke it, then gave it to them. So, Jesus broke bread and blessed it. All at once, their eyes were opened and they realized it was Jesus. Then suddenly, in a flash, Jesus vanished from before their eyes. Stunned, they looked at each other said, why didn't we recognize it was him? Didn't our hearts burn with the flames of holy passion while we walked beside him? So there's a holy passion. So there's a fire that burns in you. If there's ever a time when you're talking about Jesus with another person and you're walking with someone and you're talking about Jesus and you're talking about all the things of the Bible and the word of God and God's, God's will, Jesus is actually amongst you. That's a revelation right there. Jesus is amongst you and burning in you. You might not even discern that he is there, but he is there. So, anyways, he unveiled for us such profound revelation from the scriptures. So it's actually Jesus that gives us revelation. Anyways, they, they then after they actually shared this with the 11 other disciples of uh, their experience with Jesus. So now Jesus appears to the disciples in verse 36. While they were still discussing all of this, Jesus suddenly manifested right in front of their eyes. Startled and terrified, the disciples were convinced they were seeing a ghost. This is the second time disciples thought they were seeing a ghost, but they were actually seeing Jesus. Standing there among them, he said, be at peace. I am the living God. And I looked it up. This, is, this translation translates from the Aramaic, and this is what was actually uh, what he was saying. Be at peace. I am the living God. Jesus is now proclaiming that he is the living God. Before he was the son of man, the son of man had to redeem the first man from Adam's sin and redeem mankind. Now that Jesus has resurrected, he entered into his glory, into his glorious body, and now he proclaims and declares and, and shares, I am the living God. Don't be afraid, Jesus is saying, and he's saying to you right now, don't be afraid. Why would you be so frightened? Don't let doubt or fear enter your hearts, for I am. Jesus is also saying this to you. No matter what in this life, don't let doubt or fear enter your hearts. And that's what the disciples were experiencing at this moment because they were afraid of the Jews and they were actually sticking themselves in a room and not coming out. So, Jesus says, Come and gaze upon my pierced hands and feet. Oh, by the way, just so you know, Jesus appeared. They had a locked door. The door was locked. Jesus did not walk through the door. Jesus appeared to them like, bam. Now he's saying, look at my pierced hands and feet. See for yourselves, it is I standing here alive. Jesus is alive and he's manifested in the flesh. He is a flesh, but he was able to appear in a room behind a locked door. Touch me and know that my wounds are real. See that I have a body of flesh and bone. He showed them his pierced hands and feet and let them touch his wounds. The disciples were ecstatic, yet dumbfounded, unable to fully comprehend it. A lot of things that Jesus does is hard to comprehend for us in our natural mind. But this is what the power of God, ha um, what he does. 
So it shows too that Jesus has a flesh body. He's not a, a uh, spirit floating around. And we're also uh, called to be a co-heir. And we're going to share also a glorious body in the resurrection with like him. We're going to look like him actually. We might actually look out like ourselves, but we're going to like look like him in his glory. That's the promises of the scriptures. Anyways, knowing that they were still wondering if he was real, Jesus said, here, let me show you. Give me something to eat. Another clue of something that I believe is um, foreshadows our resurrection too. When we enter a resurrection body, we will still be able to eat. I believe in heaven and on the new earth when we, when later have um, rule and reign in the millennial reign. We're coming back to earth, by the way. We're not just sticking ourselves to heaven. We're coming back to earth and we're going to rule and reign for a thousand years. So that's other prophetic word in the book of Revelation. But Jesus is also giving us a clue that in our resurrected bodies, we can still eat. I believe we're going to have a feast and we won't ever be able to get fat because we have a resurrection body. It's going to be a perfect body, a glorious body. It's going to be amazing. So all the things that you've loved here on earth, even eating, I think we're still going to be able to do that forever and ever. Anyways, they handed him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb and they watched him eat it. There might be some significance about fish and honeycomb, I don't know. Then he said to them, don't you remember the words I spoke to you when I was still with you? I told you that everything written about me would be fulfilled. So Jesus always fulfilled his promises. Everything that he says comes true. It's absolutely true. Including all the prophecies from the law of Moses, through the Psalms, and the writings of the prophets, that they would all find their fulfillment. He supernaturally unlocked their understanding to receive the revelation of the scriptures that said to them, Everything that has happened fulfills what was prophesied of me. Christ the Messiah was destined to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Now you must go into all the nations. So this is a command from Jesus. Go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn to me. You will preach repentance of sins and forgiveness so that people can turn to Jesus. They cannot turn to Jesus unless you preach and bring um, the message that we are forgiven of our sins. But we also have to preach repentance. We have to repent of our sins and turn to Jesus. Start right here in Jerusalem. That's where it all started. For you are my witnesses and have seen for yourselves all that has transpired. And I will send the fulfillment of the Father's promise to you. So stay here in the city until the mighty power of heaven falls upon you and wraps around you. So Jesus has also promised the Holy Spirit to come upon them in power. And it's the Father's promise. So they had to wait. So after Jesus resurrected, after Jesus appeared to them, they got the revelation of who Jesus is and his resurrected body. Now Jesus tells them to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit, the ascension of Jesus. Jesus led his disciples out to Bethany. He lifted his hands over them and blessed them in his love. While he was still speaking out words of love and blessing, this is what he does, love and blessing comes from Jesus. He floated off the ground into the sky, ascending into heaven before their very eyes. And all they could do was worship him. So Jesus ascended to heaven as he's speaking blessings and love on his disciples and his people. Overwhelmed with ecstatic and ecstatic with joy, they made their way back to Jerusalem. Now they're being sent. Every day they went to the temple, praising and worshiping God. So in their waiting period, they praise and worship God. They couldn't help themselves when Jesus ascended just to worship him. And now they're um, sent. They, wait, they have to wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon them. And then they are given the will of God to do whatever God wants them to do. Jesus said, go into all the nations and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins so that they will turn to me. So this is salvation. Jesus, it's only through Jesus that we have resurrection power. No religion, no other ideology can get you into the resurrection of, of, uh, of Jesus Christ, of heaven. We are only resurrected in Jesus and through Jesus. Jesus is the door and the only door to heaven. Jesus is the only way to Father God. You cannot know God the Father unless you know Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So, God bless you. I hope this encouraged you, and I will see you next time. Peace.